Well, let's start with our video here and start addressing some problems people are having. For one, my first initial impression of Snow Leopard is wonderful. I've found that it's broke iStat menus and a few other apps, but I believe this is a good thing because now the developers ain't got the, la the excuse to be lazy and say, well, as long as it works, why well, rewrite it? So now as long as their apps stop working, they're going to rewrite it and they'll probably rewrite it in 64-bit mode. So I can see this being a good thing if it breaks certain apps makes the lazy developers get off their ass and, and rewrite their application to be modern. Uh, Shake still works, everything works great. The speed increase in Safari and the Finder is amazing. QuickTime X is wonderful. A lot of people are having some issues with QuickTime X and about QuickTime 7 and removing features and adding this and taking this out. And if we got time, I'll cover that in this video. If not, we'll talk about it in the next one. Right now, I want to read an article from Macworld explaining to everybody about the 64-bit, 32-bit Snow Leopard. Because a lot of people going around spreading FUD don't know what the heck they're talking about. So I'm just going to read it for you. You all can see it for yourself and go from there. So here's the article from Mac user Macworld. Okay. It says, there's a little bit of confusion out there on the web about what parts of Snow Leopard are running 64-bit mode and what parts are running 32-bit mode. Um, a report by Thom Howarda, whatever that guy's name is, of OS News says that under Snow Leopard, most Macs will boot using the 32-bit kernel and drivers, not a 64-bit kernel and driver. And um, the guy also points out that many Mac models don't have 64-bit EFI either. These statements, based on a pre-release copy of Snow Leopard, seems accurate to me, but the implication that the story leaves readers with is that you can't go 64-bit mode or boot into a 64-bit version of Snow Leopard if your Mac isn't booting into a 64-bit kernel. That is completely wrong. When Apple talks about Snow Leopard being thoroughly 64-bit savvy, what the company means is that almost every application included in Snow Leopard has been recompiled to run in 64-bit mode. There are two reasons this is a good thing. The first is simple. 64-bit computing is necessary if you want one of the programs on your computer to have access to more than 4 gigs of RAM. Second, there are some speed boosts associated with running in 64-bit mode. The Intel processors that power Macs have built-in math routines that operate more efficiently in 64-bit mode, processing tasks in fewer steps. That means that certain math-intensive tasks will see a speed boost under Snow Leopard 64-bit applications. If you're running a Mac powered by an Intel Core 2 Duo processor or an Intel Xeon processor, your Mac is 64-bit capable. And Snow Leopard runs 64-bit capable applications in 64-bit mode regardless of whether it's booting into a 64-bit or 32-bit kernel. In fact, the only big advantage of booting into a 64-bit kernel would be the ability to use more than 32 gigs of RAM. There aren't any Macs that can do that, and many Macs that can do that now anyway due to hardware limitations. Applications running in Snow Leopard will have access to full 16 exabytes virtual address space, just the same as if they were running in a 64-bit kernel. As a result, there's very little difference between booting into a 64-bit kernel and a 32-bit kernel in current Mac systems. This is not to say there won't be a bigger difference in the future as RAM sizes continue to grow, but presumably new high-end Mac systems will boot into the 64-bit kernel when the need arises. And how often, how long from now do you think we're going to need more than 32 or 16 exabytes of RAM? Um, so bottom line, if you've got a Core 2 Duo or Xeon based Mac, any Intel Mac not running the Core Duo or Core Solo processor, you'll be able to run applications in 64-bit mode, which will in turn be able to take advantage of faster 64-bit registers and math routines, as well as access massive amounts of memory. Now all we have to do is wait for Snow Leopard to arrive so we can try out those 64-bit applications for ourselves. And that last sentence I read to show you that this was probably written before the release. So I think that was a good, August 19th actually, I think that was a good breakdown of the 64-bit situation with Snow Leopard. The only advantage of booting into a 64-bit kernel is if you need to access more than 32 exabytes of RAM. We don't need to do that, so there's no point in that. So, um, you guys that are saying, oh, this Mac can't do that, or that Mac can't do this, it can't run 64-bit motor, it's not 64-bit this, you all get your head out of your ass. Quit claiming to be the, 
quit claiming that you're a Mac developer and talking bullshit out of your ass that you don't even know what you're talking about. If you always Mac develop, everybody I talk to on the on the web, I'm a Mac developer. I'm a Mac developer. I'm a Mac developer. Or everybody I talk to, I'm a Windows developer. Or, you know, I edit Hollywood feature films for a living. I wonder if I've ever met anybody online that's been truly honest and upfront about who they are. I don't know. I doubt it. But who, who, developers are not... Quit talking bullshit and spreading FUD about Snow Leopard, okay? Because it just makes you, in the end, look like the stupid one. Okay? So now let's talk about QuickTime. QuickTime, QuickTime. It's fast. When I double-click a movie, it loads it up pretty pretty quick. See? Um, it's a beautiful interface. When you play it and move your cursor away, everything disappears. So we just got the menu, the window there. Um, when I use QuickTime, I don't use it professionally. I don't use it to edit video professionally or to export my video professionally. I used it for quick things, easy things. Going to my iPod, my exporting something quickly for YouTube. Now, if you go up to the share menu in the new QuickTime X, you'll see there's a few options. iTunes, Mobile Media Gallery, and YouTube. Okay, and that's about it. And people are complaining that you ain't got the customization of um, what you did have in QuickTime 7. And that's true, but what they're trying to get across is QuickTime is not supposed to be a pro editing. If you want to go in there and cut this movie out and paste it inside this movie, or cut this portion of the movie out and put it with this portion of the movie out, yeah, QuickTime 7 was a quick fix for that for a lot of people. It was easy and it was convenient. But I believe Apple's getting away from it. That's not what QuickTime's made for. It's a codec, it's, it, it's, the, it's a base throughout OS X, and it's a player. But it's, we don't want you doing, I mean, you don't need to be doing, if you want to do stuff like that, there's iMovie. There's got iMovie, we've got GarageBand, all this good stuff. So basically, QuickTime was a quick fix for lazy people, if you ask me. People who are complaining about not being able to edit inside QuickTime, because you can edit inside QuickTime. You can go to Trim. You just can't paste layers. Like, I take one video and paste it into this video and put two videos together. If I'm going to do that, I go to iMovie. Or... FCE or FCP, I think just like um, they removed certain features from iMovie HD 06 to kind of distinguish it more than the Final Cut products, I think they're doing the same thing with the QuickTime player, you know? I mean, that, with QuickTime, I think they're distinguishing it more. This, there's, there was a run over in its abilities. Well, QuickTime can do this, but iMovie can do this, so which one do you want to use? You know, there's no more of that going to be going on. You know, you have a specific set workflow you're going to be able to adhere to. Um, but that's not to say QuickTime. If you have QuickTime 7, it will still be on your Mac when you install Snow Leopard. If you don't have QuickTime 7, it won't install it by default, but it's on the Snow Leopard DVD. So they're not taking it away from anybody. So you can, if you want to fire up a movie with QuickTime 07, or with QuickTime 7, just right click on it and open with QuickTime 7. It's not that big of, not that big of a deal. So this whole thing about QuickTime, I think, is just uh, nitpicking. I think overall, Snow Leopard is a wonderful, wonderful operating system. I'm surprised at how solid it is. Surprised at how fast it is. Um, I haven't been able to crash Safari, not 64-bit Safari. I haven't been able to crash it since I tried it. I read an article where somebody said they hadn't been able to get it to crash, so I started trying, and I really haven't been able to get it to crash either. So, uh, you all post video responses. Tell me what you all think about Snow Leopard. And in part three, if there is a part three will address um, a few more concerns that people are um, worried about. But my overall impressions, get it. It's worth the 30 bucks. And if you're a Tiger user going up and it's going to cost you 120 or whatever, get it. It's worth it. you got to think you're getting all the Leopard add-ons too if you're going from Tiger. So it's really worth it. So, But as far as regular Leopard users, 30 bucks, get it. You can't go wrong. It's, it seems to be, seems to be great to me. Good job, Apple. OS 10.